It is still Friday morning here at the second day of Origins Game Fair. And I'm talking with a good pal of mine, Tony Galati from Arcane Wonders. Good to talk with you once again. Pleasure. Thank you so much for hanging out and having me on again. Of course. Well, that check cleared. It's all good. <laughs> so let's uh, let's chat about uh, some new releases here yes. at the show. Some stuff yes. that's on the horizon and maybe give some love to some recent releases as well. Absolutely. So we have a lot of new things going on specifically at this show. Uh, we recently uh, released Ruby Combat Ready. That uh, came big Kickstarter last year, uh, based on the hit animated series from Rooster Teeth. Um, we never heard of it. Roosters don't have teeth. I don't understand. That. Uh, they've done Red versus Blue and a, and a, and a number of other uh, titles as well. But we just came out with two expansions. Oh, nice. uh, these two expansions actually bring in uh, all of the Kickstarter content um, that was released previously. Um, with the exception of uh, three cards that were exclusive. But other than that, this would catch up everyone to have all the current content for the game. Um, we've been having a great time with, uh, with Rooster Teeth and with the, with the Ruby license, so we're, we're really hyped about having these expansions out at this show and, and really bringing them in. Um, released in May, so just a little bit ago, Airland and Sea. Yeah, I did is, a news piece on that. Yeah, first uh, piece that we're uh, the first game that is coming out this year for us is uh, the two-player fast-paced military combat game. You're both uh, your country's uh, supreme commanders trying to uh, control the three region. Yeah, the three different theaters of war. So, um, great fifteen-dollar game. We're. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been we've been doing that. Then we have uh, the new things. So right. so basically, the, we're pre-releasing here at Origins Volcanic Isle. Volcanic Isle is the <laughs> the the premise of Volcanic Isle is, is that you are all settlers inhabiting the lost continent of Mu. Now, the lost continent of Mu is more commonly known as Easter Island. So what you're doing is is this this continent is ravaged by volcanic activity. So you're actually coming into uh, this island, and you're raising these monolithic Moai statues to appease the gods. Unbeknownst to everyone, you're actually a lot of volcanoes. <laughs> a lot Lots of volcanoes. Of volcanoes. But, but what you're doing is you're actually plugging up geysers. That is increasing the pressure under there, creating fissures. And causing volcanoes to erupt. Unfortunately, also, if a fissure ever goes across the board in any fashion entirely, it splits it, and everything on the smaller part of the board is destroyed. Uh, sinks in under sinks the waves. into the waves. So, uh, so you get a little bit of like a reverse king of the hill like thing going, where basically as you're building your uh, your territory uh, territories and your villages and everything. Things just start going away. Um, it starts with eight volcanoes on the board. We're only actually demoing it with six because of the size of this game. Right. I was um, going to mention that with the, the B-roll that I'll be sharing, the game's actually much bigger than what you're going to see on the table. Yes. And uh, so it's typically eight. The game and the game state actually starts happening when there are only two volcanoes left. So the board is going to drastically reduce in size throughout the course of the game. And I would take a wild stab that some players will plot placing uh, the statues and that to create fissures to trap their opponents. Opponents, yes. Well, but that's that's not what good friendly people do at all. They don't they don't try to uh, to like primitive uh, lead nuclear attack people <laughs> with, with volcanoes or anything like that. Oh, no, never. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so Volcanic Isle... How many, how many does that play? Uh, two to four players. Um, and it, it is... We have 13 uh, plus age, but it, it is... A, it, because there's a lot of small plastic pieces in this box. Um... But yeah, the eight volcanoes all all are above the. You'll see in the B-roll, but it is uh, yes. it is it is a nice table presence uh, on this game in particular. And it's funny, I I always point out to people when uh, I see a game that says, "Oh, age is fourteen and up," yeah. and I see what the components are. I tell them all the time, "This does not look like this. You got to be 
14 to understand this game. It's just, it's a U.S. thing. It's a yeah. law, you know, yep. in case people, little kids would swallow stuff. Yeah, and, and there are a lot of small parts on this game, so don't, don't oh. put them in your mouth. And also, <laughs> do not fold up your stroller with a child in it. That's that, 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 the tags, too. That is probably not advised. Good idea not to do that. <laughs> okay. Moving so, on. moving along, we have had a big announcement in the past uh, week. So, we are bringing Smartphone Inc. It was a big s hit last year um, to the U.S. So, we are actually demoing it here. But Smartphone Inc. is coming out as part of the Dice Tower Essentials line in 2020. They are uh, Cosmodrome. The creators of the game are putting out a Kickstarter next month. I was going to ask if it's yes. going to Kickstarter or straight to Yeah, so we have this link that we've been sharing, and it is uh, smartphone.cosmodrome.games. Oh, that's super easy to remember. And uh, so that link it will give you all the information that you like about the release of the Kickstarter and the yeah, end of the game. I'll be sharing that. I'll yeah. get a news piece out. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. No, we we've been having a real, a real good time with demos. I about tossing up on the show as part of the news segments. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's been uh, demoing great. People have been having a great time. Uh, if they haven't had been introduced to the game prior, like us, and they're now being introduced the first time, and we're really excited about that and time. Don't, don't the players kind of represent? It's like the age of the the cell phone boom, yes. the smartphone boom. So everybody kind of represents a, a company. Yeah. So you have different companies. Like for example, here's one. This is Sun. Tech. Um, there's uh, Redberry and a, and a number of others that basically yeah Redberry yeah didn't do, do didn't do too well in the end <laughs> yeah so there are the different companies which are uh, located in different portions of the the world and you're pretty much developing the tech behind your cell phones uh, logistically shipping them to different portions of the world and sounds interesting it really does a lot of pricing so it, it's definitely an economic simulator where you are bringing cell phones into the world for the first time. Yeah, and, and we, we're having a really good time. People are really excited about it. Now you also had a, a, a fairly recent release, uh, Good Critters, yes, which so, has a very unique art style to it. Yeah, so Good Critters, you're all uh, anthropomorphic uh, mobsters. Yeah, I don't have one here, but be roll, don't worry. But you're all uh, anthropomorphic uh, mobsters, so you're all like rabbits and weasels and stuff like that, and uh, basically doing terrible, horrible things to each other. Oh no! See, the thing is, is about you're all mobsters. You out on a raid, so you heist it out all the loot, and now you have it laid out before you. And the mobster boss divvies up the loot however he feels or she feels that it should be divvied out. So, like all the loot's being uh, divvied up, you might be like, you know what? I, you did a good job. I'm gonna give you five thousand, but you two, so you only did uh, a lousy job. You're getting two, and then everyone votes. So the boss divvies up the loot, and then everyone votes. But So obviously you have five cards, and you could vote yes or no. But you could also rob somebody. Or you could guard against being robbed. Okay. Or you could skim off the top. Right. Well, that's, <laughs> so, that's politicians. That's different. Yeah, 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 it is different. And so, so you have all the different little things that you're going on. And, and basically, based on how the vote ends up, you can bribe each other. You can go back and forth. Uh, and, and the mobster with the most loot at the end of the game wins. So, yeah, it's a, that's actually... That's how it is in, in life. Yeah. Three-day sure. players, uh, fast-paced, really really high active, uh, act, uh, high energy in the game. So, yeah. Anything else uh, that you want to tackle? Um... Really? A game out there that maybe uh, you think needs a little more love? Oh, oh, oh yeah, that, that game. You know, the one that we talk about every time we're on here. Mage Wars Academy. What's that? Mage Wars <laughs> Arena. So, no. The <laughs> I like Mage Wars. I like Mage no, Wars. No, no, no. Mage Wars. Yeah, it's a great game. The, the, the big thing that we've done here is, is that we have four expansions that have hit in the past uh, about six months. Um, they're all Academy expansions. But they all do expand upon Arena. So we have the Monk, the Necromancer, the uh, Druid, and the Elementalist. So those four expansions have come out uh, within the past like six months. 
Um, all of them are available now. We're doing a actually we're doing a special here at the show, and we have. Which uh, unfortunately you'll but, miss. But uh, each one, like so, you're one of the main questions we've gotten is, well, there isn't a monk or an elementalist in arena yet. There, they've not been made. So how can I use monk cards in arena? A lot of the monk cards are uh, spell school based to work really well with like paladin, priestess, uh, and such of that nature. So what we're looking at with mo most of the academy expansions is that it's really going to fill out your low spell cost uh, spells in your spell book so that you have uh, different options that you to give you different combos. I dig the spell books too. Yeah. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, and, and that, that, that's really the biggest thing with these expansions uh, for, from Academy is that, no, it's not going to give you the big demon or the big uh, high-cost cards, yeah. But it's going to give you a lot of the small uh, two, three, four mana cost uh, creatures and spells that allow you to really round out a lot of these spell books. And, and we're seeing, uh, we have the tournament going on at Gen Con. Uh, okay. The annual Mage Wars Arena tournament, and we tens of thousands of dollars is on the line in prizes, <laughs> prizes and trophies. <laughs> I tried, guys. I tried, and we will. Uh, but but we've seen from the spell books that we've seen, kind of uh, feeding in from uh, the, the online uh, play and everything else, is that there's a lot of of arena uh, arena spell books using quite a few academy spells in them. So, like, the thing is, is the competitive uh, spell books right now are definitely utilizing uh, academy, and you're almost not competitive if you don't use it. So, it's one of those things where these cards are absolutely useful in Arena, and and it's going to be shown at the tournament. So, like, if you... It, I get we're it. actually going to say to the, to the fan base, if you don't believe that, Come to Gen Con and, and be through. proved wrong. Right, exactly. So, <laughs> so uh, you've heard Tony's it. Like, I, like, like yeah, we, we want to see more people sign up for the tournament and show us that, no, the Academy cards just aren't that great because uh, we, 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 we were not Thanks sure it different. different. Yeah. <laughs> so, but no, like, uh, Academy uh, is going strong. We don't have any arena announcements at this point in time. Okay. We're not announcing a discontinuation. We're not announcing new product at this point. But uh, the things are in the works internally, and uh, and we're we're going to be moving forward with different plans. But they just are not they're not public yet. It's none of your business is what he's trying to say. No, 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 no. Of, no actually, we, none of my business. We ju we just haven't announced it. We we've got quite a few more games going through the pipeline than we ever had before, and uh, like. I mean, we. I don't think we've ever talked about like six, seven boxes at a time in a previous conversation. No, no, so it's usually a couple. Yeah, three. I think three last year. Yep. So the big thing there is that we we have a lot going down the pipeline. So we want to make sure that we're not talking about things too far in advance. That, and of course, I completely yeah. understand that there'll be a big announcement tomorrow. <laughs> Because that's usually what happens at these conventions. <laughs> no, the day no, no. after I do an interview with somebody, it's like, oh, we got a big, big reveal. No, actually, uh, like, actually, the the big reveal th that we are doing, we have a not yet to be named game. Uh, th we're going to be demoing in the event hall at Gen Con. It is designed by Emerson Matsuchi, uh, the designer of Century Spice Road and Reef. Um, along with the new Metal Gear Solid game, I believe, that, that just came out. So, um, And it's a big city builder. And we have a lot of cool stuff going on with that. And so that's going to be coming uh, in the near future. That's our big, like, this is what's coming. And there's a game called Dragon Scales, which after, actually, like, the week, next week, I'm going to start spraying a lot of information. It's gonna, you're you're going to see it out there. It's uh, designed... You heard it here second. Yeah. <laughs> It's designed by Richard Lanius, and it's a, a it's a dice chucking type game where you're all villains who are delving into the dragon's lair, working together to 
either kill the dragon or run away with as much loot as you can and leave everyone else to die. Right, exactly. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. Um, Richard Lani has done some really fun dice games. Yeah, he yeah. Really does. So, well, we're really excited about everything we have coming down the pipeline. So, it's, it's, it's just... Any no. final words you'd like to share with the audience, Tony? Um, no. Basically, the, that's everything. You can find more information about all of our games at arcanewonders.com. Uh, we have game page with all the little boxes. You just click on the box that you want. And that's how it usually works. Yeah. So. Excellent. Tony, good talking to you once again. Hey, thank you so I'll much. I'll see you at Gen Con. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for watching my Origins Game Fair 2019 coverage. If you'd like to see more convention coverage, click right here. And if you'd like to see a somewhat random video from the Gaming Gang channel, including recordings of the live Monday through Friday episodes of The Daily Dope, click right here. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. Thank you very much for watching, and please subscribe.